Welcome everybody, in this video we are going to cover the visitor design pattern. The pattern itself aims to define two sets of abstractions. The first set are the elements on which you are going to be performing operations and the second set are visitors. These objects perform operations on your elements. So anytime you need a new set of operations, you define a new visitor and you do not touch the elements. To bring in an analogy, we can have a set of fruits, which will be our elements. We will take orange and apple, two elements. And now we can have operations that we can perform on those elements. So let's say we will have an operation of peeling. That operation will now be able to either visit an orange or visit an apple. We're visiting an orange, we're peeling it with our hands. If we're visiting an apple, we have to take out the peeler or maybe a knife, depending on where you're from, and you take the skin off. Let's say now we want to make the juice from our fruit, right? In that case, we define a new visitor. It is now able to visit the orange and it's able to visit the apple. When it visits the apple, cut the orange in half, you squeeze it or you use the machine, whatever you're more familiar with. You've never made orange juice i pity you if we have the fruit making visitor visiting the apple we cut it up into small uh, slices and we put it in the machine and then that kind of blends it up notice that both of the operations the peeling and the, the juice making both have the same functions visit orange or visit apple what happens inside the visitor stays in the visitor the object all it knows is just how to let the visitor visit itself as always, if you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Let's proceed. So hopefully that analogy was okay. If not, let's take a look at the implementation. I'm just gonna take a different one. We have a place, an element. Uh, this could be the fruit from the analogy, somewhere where we're going to visit. As I said, all it knows how to do is accept a visitor. So we just let it come in. Uh, the visitor itself is able to know which places it is going to visit. So the visitor knows, is it going to an orange? Is it going to the apple? In our case, it is the park or home. General definitions, yeah, we have the place, uh, the park or the home, and uh, then we just supply that instance into the visitor, and then the visitor does something with it. In our case, a dude or a robber can visit the places. The dude does dude type of things the robber does robber type of things right and yeah depending on where he is he does those certain things and that's pretty much the pattern now let's take a look at maybe what kind of problems we can solve by applying this pattern uh, let's take a look at this simple more or less simple repository nothing like a repository that you will see in the real world so a repository of some sort, we get, we list, we write, we update, right? So simple CRUD operations. We may have a PostgreSQL database. We may have a MongoDB database, whatever other clients that you can think of. We can also have Redis. On each of these, we define these new operations. But the problem is uh, you never really see a repository like this, right? You don't just have my repository and have the CRUD operations. You have my A repository, my B repository, my get generic dogs repository. You have uh, all kinds of uh, weird repositories. You have a bunch of interfaces for each individual repositories. And that is if you're doing a repository pattern to hide your database operations, it can become a mess. How about if we just have a connection, a PostgreSQL connection, a MongoDB uh, connection or a Redis connection, right? So we can consider Redis, MongoDB or PostgreSQL we can consider them as elements. And then we can consider get, list, update, write. These are operations. And now we can perform that same operation on one of those elements. So let me show you how you can apply the visitor pattern to it. If we have our repository, again, all we're doing is we're just letting an operation visit the repository, right? So if we're PostgreSQL, if we're Redis, if we're MongoDB, whatever, we let the operation come to us. The connection, one of those three connections, doesn't change. The operation knows how to visit these three databases. If you have file storage, if you have other places wherever you want to persist data, those will have to come onto the operation. So this is one of the things that you have to watch out. Do not try to fit the visitor pattern where the number of elements is growing 
rather than the number of operations, then it's going to it's going to fall over. And that's one of the things that they mentioned in the books to be wary of. The number of elements grows more than the number of operations. It's not a good application. You want to make sure that you want to define new operations to perform on your elements. So anyway, we have our operation. Let's define our repositories. So we have our client. I define it as, as a string. You can think of it as an EF core client. You can think of it as a native PostgreSQL connection, etc. right? I'm just defining a, a string, a public string, which we can then do something with. Same thing for MongoDB. It still implements iRepository. We're still passing uh, the operation into it. The important thing is we're injecting the client into the visitor. Same with, thing with Redis. Now let's say we define the get operation. What I do here is I define it as kind of a container at the end of which the result will be accumulated in. You do not have to do this. You can run it as a function where you get the results straight away. However, this does play in if you have your elements using the composite design pattern where you're assen you essentially have a tree of elements where each individual element can be visited. You can apply recursion and visit the whole tree and apply your visitor to the whole tree. If you have a product tree where you can have prices or stock, you can accumulate prices, you can ac accumulate average prices, you can ac accumulate stock. If you have some statistical data about every single product, you want to capture manufacturing prices. Again, you just take a visitor, you recursively apply it over the tree of each individual product. And I don't know, you see some kind of average, some kind of statistics where visitors can get injected to the database or to some kind of notification service you Can run on a schedule. As soon as stock goes down, you send a notification, something like that. So anyway, the get operation does some accumulation of the result, right? So we want to read something from uh, some kind of database. We are going to essentially throw a little hook or like a fishing rod into the element and we're going to fish out our response, right? So we have the actual get int operation. If we then want to say get string or get dog, read other data from the database, there can be some common functionality that we can share across these functions. All these functions need to do is know how to adapt it to this particular element. So there is a lot of potential of reusing, maybe parsing or mapping uh, functions and let it live in its relevant place. So again, coming back to the repository pattern, otherwise this would look something like injecting a strategy here of how you're going to map the getters, you're going to use it here, or maybe you do something like have a private function here and then you apply the mapping function here or you, you have some kind of projection outside and whatnot. Right. Otherwise, you can um, go ahead and reuse that functionality here within the operation that you are about to perform. That is pretty much all I have on the visitor design pattern. I myself haven't actually ever used it. I think it is one of the more rare design patterns. However, from the use cases that I've seen it being applied to, it solves the problem very well. This will be it for the video. As always, if you've enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like. Subscribe if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to check out the description and have a good day.